right, for section 8.6, part 1, we're going to be talking about parametric equations. So a parametric equation is when we take both of our x variable and our y variable, and we write them as a function in terms of a third variable, t. So if we look down here at this example 1, we have x of t, which just means our point, let's say we were going to write this as a coordinate point, x is equal to 1 minus t. And then y is equal to 12 minus 3t. So we could look at how we would graph this manually or by hand. We would have to choose points for t, then solve for x. So we choose t values, find x then, then y, and then we would be given our x, y point. So we could actually graph these. So let's just start with a few points <clears throat> and plug those in. So if we plug in negative 2, then x would be equal to 3. Plug in negative 2 for y, or for t, to solve for y, we would get a positive 6, so 18, which would give us the point 3, 18. Ah. Then for the next one, plug in negative 1 for t, we'd get 1 minus negative 1 is 2. And then plug in negative 1 here, we'd get uh, 15. So we'd have the point 2, 15. Plug in 0, we'd have the point 1, 12. And again, just like other equations, you can start to see patterns that form also. So this would be a 0, this would be 9, and that would be the point zero, nine. Then plug in 2, we'd have the point uh, negative 1, and then 2 there would be 6. Okay, so that's what a parametric equation is. It's just where we take our x and our y variables and make them into equations of their own in terms of a third variable, t. So I'm going to erase all of this, and then let's go ahead and look at some different ways that we can work with these examples. So example number one says to eliminate the parameter t to find a simplified Cartesian equation of the form it, in the form of y equals mx plus b. for x of t equals 1 minus t and y of t equals 12 minus 3t. T. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, we want to solve for y. So if we want to solve for y, we need to take x and plug this x in to our y equation somehow. So it's the x equation that needs to be worked with in some way. So we're going to take this x equation and we are going to solve it for t. Now in some of your homework it's going to say write an equation for x in terms of y and that's kind of confusing. So you would re reverse all of this. You would take, you'd start off with your y equation, work with it, plug it into the x equation. Okay, but uh, for most of the cases we always want our equation to be in the form of y equals something, which is what we want on this one. Um, so first step that I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to write these steps up here too, Let's see if I give myself enough room. Okay, for step number one, first thing that I want you to do is rewrite these equations so it's just x and y and not in function notation. So rewrite with x and y because this function notation can get really confusing, especially when you start trying to solve for t. I don't want you to use that function notation and think that it's another t. So rewrite that as the equations x equals 1 minus t and y equals 12 minus 3t. So it just took them out of that function notation. Okay, next step. Step 2 solve the x equation for t. 
So we're going to take our x equation. Now also, we would do the opposite of this. If we wanted it to be an x equals or an x equation in terms of y, we would do the opposite of all of this. Okay, uh, starting with step two. Okay, so we're going to take our x equation, x equals 1 minus t, and we're going to solve for t. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get x minus 1 equals negative t. Divide everything by negative 1, and then I'm going to rewrite that. So 1 minus x is equal to t. All right, that's my step 2. Step 3 is going to be plug that in to the other equation. So plug t in, plug in t to the y equation. Okay, so we just found what t was. t is equal to 1 minus x. So let's take that 1 minus x, plug it in for t in the y equation. Then I will have y in terms of x. So I've got y equals 12 minus 3 times y min 1 minus x. And now our last step, step four is going to be to rewrite and simplify. So rewrite and simplify. So multiply that negative three through, so we would have negative three plus three x, so that is equal to three x plus nine. And then that's our final equation because we wanted to write that parametric equation in terms of um, a Cartesian equation using the form y equals mx plus b. And then if you went back to where we filled in the table of values, you would see that those x values and y values did show that this was a linear function. Okay, for example number two, uh, we're given a little bit of a different looking one, a little more difficult, but we're given x and y, and the most important thing to look up for right here is we want an equation for y as a function of x. So again, same as we did last time, we're going to take our x variable, oh well let's rewrite first. So Rewrite as x equals 8 square root of t and y equals 4t plus 6. Okay. Then we're going to work with this x equation, and we're going to solve this x equation for t. So we'll have x divided by 8 equals square root of t. So therefore, t is equal to x over 8 squared. Great, so that's t. Now we're going to take that t, whatever t is, right here. We're going to take that, clear back, and plug that in for t in our y equation, do that substitution. So we can rewrite y now as y equals, and instead of t, I'm going to fill in everything that I know about t. So x over eight, all squared, plus six. And you can just fill it, put your answer right into my open math, just like that. You don't have to simplify any further than that. Okay, so this one is where it says a Cartesian equation in the form of x equals f of y. So what that means is we want x now to be the outside of our equation, so it's going to be x equals something, something with a y in it. Okay, so we're going to have to reverse our order. Still, our first step is going to be the same. We can rewrite with just x and y. So x equals 4t squared, and then y equals negative 3 plus 4t. Okay, but instead, now I'm going to take my y equation, I'm going to solve for y, and then I'm going to plug, or solve for t, sorry. Then I'm going to plug that value in for this t up here, and then I'll have an equation in the form of x equals some function in terms of y. Um, so solve this one this time. So we're going to have y plus 3 equals 4t, and then divide both sides by 4. So we'll have one-fourth y 
plus 3 fourths equals t. Now we want to take all that t is equal to, and we're going to take it back up to our x equation and plug that in for t there. So now we're going to have y equals 4 times in parentheses what t is, which we found to be 1 fourth y, plus 3 fourths all squared. <clears throat> and again, my open math will accept your answer like that, so you do not have to simplify any more than that. Example number four can be a little bit challenging. It says, given the parametric equations below, eliminate the parameter t to obtain an equation for y as a function of x. So we're back to being able to write a y equals equation. So first thing, let's rewrite those with just x and y. And this is going to take a little bit of uh, remembering their, your natural logarithm rules. Okay, we're going to take x, and we are going to solve for y. So to solve for y, I need to be able to get bring this exponent down. And because we're using e, that all points to using taking the natural log of both sides of the equation. So we're going to take the natural log of x, which equals the natural log of e to the 3t. Now remember with logarithms, if we have an exponent in here, we can bring that exponent down in front of our natural logarithm. And then we have 3t times the natural log of e. Well, if you remember, the natural log is base e, so the log base e of e is going to be just 1. So we end up with the natural log of x equals 3t, and then we're going to divide both sides by 3, and you'll have t equals 1 third natural log of x. So that's what t is. Now we've got to take that t and plug it back in to t in our y equation. So now we have y equals e to the 4 times t, which is one third natural log of x. I can rewrite simplify, so multiply that four through first. So we have y equals e to the four uh, thirds. Let's multiply it through, so four thirds natural log of x. Now again, when we're working with those properties of natural logarithms, we can take that four thirds, we can put it back up to an exponent, because it would be more beneficial for me that way right now. So we would have e to the natural log of x to the 4 thirds power, because now I've got my e and my natural log together, and then all of that is going to simplify to x to the 4 thirds. And then that is our final answer. So final answer is y equals x to the 4 thirds.